The Law of Mind in Action by Fenwick L. Holmes Feeling and Emotions In feeling is the creative power and there is the real divinity of man. One's first impression is that it lies in thought, but deeper than thought is the power that produces it and the feeling that creates it. We think because we feel. Creation is not directly in thought, but in feeling. Every word we speak is a creative word, but it is the feeling that it expresses and which accompanies it that creates. The deepest feeling produces the highest creation. A word spoken in love produces harmony in body and ease in conditions. A word spoken in hate throws poison into the blood and produces physical discord for the hater. This is the more easily understood when we think of the creative mind in terms of subjective mind. This mind is the seat of all emotions and feelings. The objective mind has only memories of the emotions that have been experienced. The subjective mind is simply another name for creative mind and therefore the creative mind acts on the feeling which in essence it is. The fact that all creative acts are accompanied by the highest feeling identifies feeling with the power to create. The union of the masculine and feminine principle is a lofty emotion whether it be in the mad affinity of the atoms or the sweet fertilization of the plant or the procreation of animal life. Yet, as all acts on the sense plane are but the outer manifestation of an inner thought or feeling, and as all acts which are true to nature are also true to God, the joy of physical creation is but the reflex or externalization of inner and finer feelings and emotion. The sense act is divine as all nature is divine from planet to man since both are the product of divine mind, yet back of it lies the noble emotion of the soul, the spiritual emotion. No feeling on the physical plane can rival the joy of mental creation as in the work of the inventor, artist or composer. Yet above this shines the highest star of spiritual conception, which is love. To express love is to outrival all the mad ecstasies of nature in the sweet ecstasy of the soul. Both can be defined as the union of kindred things, but love is the union of spirit with spirit, where soul meets soul and is satisfied. Love is the desire of God for completeness in another. This is creative feeling. It is to accomplish it that the whole universe is produced. That at the end of the series, man might rise on his own initiative and seek completeness in God and thus enable God to fulfill his desire. Man thus pours back to God across the chords of life the rich music of a heart in tune with him. Thus God and man and nature join in the great divine harmony of being. Feeling must be regarded therefore as the divine power to become manifest. In the physical organism it is the genuine correspondent of the highest in spiritual being and it exists in man as the basis of creative energy. Rightly directed, feeling can be depended on as the current of divine life flowing out into expression in all our affairs, in health and wisdom. Do not fear the emotions, nor think there is virtue in the denial of the higher senses. That is a false philosophy. Rightly control the feeling, yet recognize it as spirit's joy seeking expression through you. Deep feeling of genuine emotions of love, faith, sympathy, joy of existence, these are the creative factors. 
the positive elements in the realization of the new life. Abstract thinking, calm reasoning have no such power as thought sustained by feeling. Many people become intellectually persuaded of the truth of the new way of life, which we call the science of mind, who yet do not get results through their knowledge. What is needed, therefore, is to bathe knowledge in the deep feeling of truth. How shall this be accomplished? We must realize that it is secured in the same way as any other quality we desire. If we wish to develop a quality or demonstrate health or wealth, we do so by stating to ourselves that it exists, exists for us now and by laying claim upon it. Then we go quietly about our work and expect the law to work out our manifestation for us. Mind then acts to produce in expression or form what we have given it in thought. The great moving heart of the universe stands ready to pour through the channels we provide, the life and love which it is. For us to recognize it is to allow it to become manifest for us. It assumes toward us the attitude we assume toward it. Knowing this, we may well put our knowledge into action through the following simple breathing exercise. All the finer forces of the body can be made to tingle with this exercise. Having found a restful position, breathe deeply and as you inhale, say, I am breathing in all the love and faith of God. The spirit of life is now filling my whole body. Then, as you exhale, imagine yourself as diffusing all the new energy of life throughout your body and say, I feel the presence of divine life passing through my whole being. This will produce a fine ecstasy as the thought at once puts the body into a vibration corresponding to it. This gives us feeling in physical expression which produces confidence that we can have mental and spiritual feeling as well. In fact, we shall find that we do at once begin to feel the power of divine life in us. This exercise is especially desirable for those who through over effort of body or mind have depleted what is often termed the reserve power and produced a condition of exhaustion. We are now ready to use the following meditation, striving always to feel as deeply as we can. Realization. I know that God is life, love and wisdom. I know that this life, love and wisdom is in me for I am one with the Father. I know that in me is a vast power of faith. I feel the new confidence of one who draws from the heart of infinite love. He that believeth on me from within him shall flow streams of living water, said Jesus of the Spirit. Love is in me, over me, around me and through me. All power and love is given unto me. I am now receptive to the highest that God can give. I receive it in the deepest joy and thanksgiving. I thank thee, Father, that thou hearest me always. So be it.